how's it going people welcome back to ability to learn the show about educational facts and tributes for your daily knowledge happy friday and i guess it's that last day of a productive week again for all of us i hope you're still tuning in for one more episode of this week all right that's what i'm talking about okay let's do some exercise first as usual before all the trivias Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Friday. I'm coming to you from my backyard. Thought I'd get some fresh air today. Hopefully you guys can get out and get some fresh air too. Um, I have a game for you today and I'm going to call it Fitness Charades. So, let me explain how the game works before we start. So, I have a bowl of different sporting activities or um, games things that you can act out. So what I'm going to do is pick one of these and I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read the sport or um, activity you're going to be doing and then we're going to act it out together. So let's do a sample. First one says swing a golf club. All right. We're going to come back over here, and we're going to do our charades. All right, swing a golf club. One, keep your head down. Two, let me see you swing the golf club. Good, do it again. Swing a golf club. Bring your arms back over your shoulder. Good. One more time. All right, so that's how it's gonna go, and we're gonna keep doing that for the rest of our papers. All right, let's get started and I'll add some music. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna shake up our charade bowl. Let's reach our hand in there and pull out our first, oh no, it's all stuck together. Our first charade. Open it up. All right, get ready because we are gonna go skiing even though it's like 80 degrees outside all right give yourself ample room and whoosh whoosh down the hill we go faster lean forward it kind of looks like i'm doing the cat daddy dance if anybody out there knows what that is all right lean forward now you try good you're doing way better than me i was never a skier but i'm coming i'm coming this is fun. Are you guys having fun? All right. It is hot out there today, but it's a good thing we're skiing. <sighs> Let's pick another one. All right, shake, shake, shake. This one, I want to see you do it with me. Jeez, who picked a post-it notes to do this with? All right, next one. Swim underwater. Seems easy enough. If only I had a pool. All right, here we go. Down, down, down we go, and swim, scuba, wow, you guys are great at doing the breaststroke underwater, now me, I hate opening my eyes underwater, but you guys look good, all right, let's see it, great job, this is kind of funny, all right, Next up, our fit and charade is going to be dum da da dum. Aha! Pitch a baseball. All right, come on, let's go. All right, warm up your arm. Do some windmills. Stretch your arms. All right. Now, get ready. You're going to stand on the pitcher's mound. No, Emily, turn the other way. There you go. All right, stand on the pitcher's mound. And 95 miles an hour. All right, that was just a warm-up. I can go faster. All right, let me talk with my catcher. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. All right. And 200 miles an hour. Woo! Burning rubber out there. All right. You guys know how to pitch a baseball. Next up. 
yeah, this was a bad idea. Just clumped together. Should have used paper that was not sticky, but I only have limited resources. All right, next up is our running. Oh gosh, all right. If you cannot run, you can do it in a chair just like that. Three, two, one, on your marks, it's at go! That's me when I'm running after donuts. Go, go, go! Or I'm getting chased by a swarm of angry bees. That's the only time I ever run in my life. Woof, what a workout. Now, remember, if you are seated, you can do these movements in your chair, like you're pretending to run. Pretending to run is always better than actually running, okay? Anyways, let's forget about running. Our next activity is going to be... Da -da -da -da. Bicycling. All right. Now, I don't really know how I'm supposed to do a bicycle while I'm standing up. So I'm going to do my best at pedaling and maybe I'll just pretend that my arms are the bicycle pedals. Yeah, that's the best that I got. Can you guys do a better bicycle? Let me see you guys pretending to ride a bicycle. Yeah, that one was kind of a wash. Hopefully the next one is better, let's see. Surfing, all right. Now, I did see a lot of people over at Huntington Beach this weekend, but that is not good. So come on, we'll do it in the backyard and we'll just pretend to be surfing. Ba 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 All right, let's see you surf. Surfboard. Surfboard. Hang loose, bra. I'm having too much fun out here, guys. All right. Next up. We should play this game at the day program. I like it. Minus the running part. All right. Batting a baseball. All right. Now, we all miss the angels, don't we? But when we do finally see them again, we see them step up to the plate. They dig their heels in and they practice a couple swings. They wait for the pitch and boom. They knock it out of the park. And then what they do is they watch it to see just how far it goes. And then usually it hits a car in the parking lot. But let's try it again. All right, step up, get your stance ready, elbow behind your head, and step and swing. Whew. This is a great ab workout, you guys. Money, I'm a pro. I'm a pro batter. I'm like Mike Trout. Also, Mike Trout, I'm available to be sponsored for this video. All right, we are still looking. We still have a bunch of charades left. But unfortunately, they're stuck together because life. Disco! All right, so this is not a sport, but it's an activity. Let's... Okay, this is going to be embarrassing. Oh, dear. What are you doing? Stop it. No. No. Oh, man. That is some dedication. I'm just doing this for you, clients, okay? I don't dance. I'm doing this for you. All right, let's see your disco moves. I believe in miracles since you came along. Yeah, I should stop singing too. Self-destruct sequence activated. All right, now, next up, ping pong. Did you know that ping pong is actually an Olympic sport? All right, get your wrists ready. All right, now these people kind of like jump back and forth and watch out. Ciao! Backhand! Get ready. Oh! Oh! Ciao! Ping pong paddles are also called blades for those who play the sport actively. Thanks, JR, for that move. I like that move. I'm gonna copy it. Kachoo! Pow! Great job. It's all in the wrist. All in the wrist. <sighs> Need a wrist guard. It's on fire. All right. Next up. You guys having fun with this game so far? Not gonna lie, it's pretty hot out today. But hopefully you guys are inside and staying safe and healthy. Next up, we are going to play basketball. So, 
You can dribble a basketball. I'm doing it between my legs. I think that's what I'm doing. Uh-huh. Dribble it between your legs and pop it up for the jump shot. Shoo. Mm, dribble between the legs and jump shot. Jump shot! All right, let's see you guys do it. Dribble it, jump shot. Good job. I know you guys like basketball. We play that a lot. Our next sport is boxing. Okay, this is the dance, right? No. Okay, oh, oh, oh. Boxing, like we did in yesterday's activity. Oh, you guys already know how to do this. Jab, jab, cross, 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 jab, uppercut, uppercut. Uh, more jabs. Yeah, you guys know how to do it. Oh. Oh, why are you hitting me? Oh, you guys have some strong arms now. Very nice. Woof. That's enough boxing. I don't want to get hurt anymore. Alrighty. Here comes kicking a soccer ball. All right, now soccer, as you know, is only with your feet. So you're gonna dribble it. That's what they call when you pass it back and forth between your feet. Line it up and shoot. Of course I scored. If this is imaginary sports, of course I'm gonna score. Shoot! There we go. Well, I played soccer when I was four, so basically I'm a genius. I'm just kidding. I was just the goalie, and I got hit a lot. All right, soccer, thanks for the memories. We have just a few more left. Here comes our next activity or sport, archery. So, archery is the one with the bow and the arrow. So you have your bow, you load it with the arrow, you pull it back, and like just like that, bring it back by your ear, and then release. And you should hit your target. So, put your arrow on your bow, pull it back, Bring it eye level and release. Now, I also did archery in Girl Scouts, so basically, I am just a warrior like Mulan. I don't know if that's true. But I do want to see the new Mulan movie. Hopefully, it's coming out soon on Netflix or something. I want to watch it. Oh, speaking of Hulu, we have our next dance is the Hulu where you sit and you watch TV. Yes, I'm turning on my computer and I'm eating popcorn and I'm watching my favorite shows on Hulu. What? It's not Hulu. Oh, it's hula. Like the dance. Okay, let me see if I can do the hula dance. All right, work up your hips. Hula dancing is all about the hips. All right, I'm ready, all right. Oh. It'd be nice to be in Hawaii right now. Bring it around time. Where's my grass skirt? I think I left it in storage. Mm, now I know. Hula is not the same as Hulu. We've been in quarantine for too long. I'm just thinking about binge watching more shows. All right, next activity. Serve a tennis ball. Serve is in capital letters, people. So you better serve. All right. What they do is they, again, dribble the tennis ball with their racket, then they throw it up over their heads and whack it across the net, and whack. Woo! That was a good one. All right, let's dribble it again. Dribble your ball, tennis ball, throw it up over your head, and whack. You guys remember playing a lot of these games on the Wii. Let's see you serve that tennis ball. Yeah, I know. I'm a Wii pro, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, serve it. Let me see. Good job. All right, two more. All right, I am finding our next activity in the bowl. They are still stuck together. In the future, Emily, don't use post-it notes. But hopefully this gives you guys a little second to catch your breath, drink some water, and gear up for our last two activities. Here we go. 
catch a football. Okay, now I know you guys know how to throw a football, but do you know how to catch a football? All right. Now, whenever I see people catching football on TV, they're like, oh, oh, where is it? Oh, and then they like position themselves and they run and then they catch it like it's a baby coming out of a burning building. And they like take a knee. All right, let's try it again. The ball is coming down. I got it, catch. Yeah, they're always like, I got it, I got it. Well, while I'm here, I might as well do a Tim Tebow. Yep. I mean, might as well. Last one, because I'm getting tired. I don't know about you guys. Skateboarding. All right, I can be Tony Hawk for a minute or so. All right, yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm a skateboarder. All right, here we go. I'm skateboarding downhill. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same like surfing, but not as much moving. All right, now, what you're gonna do with your leg, you're gonna push yourself. Push, push off the foot onto the ground and keep your balance. Now, you can even jump and do a trick if you know how. I don't know how, but I do know how to jump. You guys, that is it for today. I am so tired and it is so hot out here, but I had so much fun hanging out with you guys today. Have fun in the morning show and we'll see you later. Our first observance is World Emoji Day. Hey, do you know those cute yellow round faces and other colorful icons on your smartphone? Those are emojis. Emojis can be used to add more expressions to your messages to your friends and family. Today was chosen for the date of the holiday because the calendar emoji, the original one, um, has that date on it. World Emoji Day was created in 2014 by Jeremy Birch the founder of Emojipedia. It's a website that keeps track of all emojis and their definitions. Ah, interesting. Next up, Yellow Pigs Day. Yellow Pigs Day is celebrated with things related to yellow pigs, but the main focus of this day is on celebrating just a specific number. It's number 17. The day was created in the early 1960s by two Princeton math students Michael Spivak and David Kelly after they had been working with and listing the properties of number 17. The day's name likely was a reference to David Kelly's collection of yellow pigs. The day's mascot became a yellow pig with 17 toes, 17 eyelashes, and 17 teeth. Next is Wrong Way Corrigan Day. Okay, this observance has an interesting story behind it. In 1938, Douglas Corrigan recently purchased a 1929 Curtis Robin plane and rebuilt and modified it. Then in July of the same year, he flew it from California to New York. Then on this day, of course of the same year still, um, he decided to fly back to California. But he started heading east instead of going west and he flew all the way to Dublin, Ireland. So when he got off the plane, he's like, Haha, I'm finally back to California. It's time for me to take a rest at my... Wait a minute. This does not look like California. Where am I? He claimed his flight had been an accident and he had gotten lost after his compass failed to work. His pilot's license was suspended but was soon reinstated. And then he became a celebrity and gained the name Wrong Way Corrigan. Next is National Tattoo Day. Today is dedicated to tattoos, which are permanent marks made by adding pigments to ruptures in your skin. They are most commonly used for decoration, but some people get tattoos as a form of self-expression or even reminders of spiritual or cultural traditions. Well, don't worry, you don't have to get a tattoo in order to celebrate this one. We're gonna observe it by learning some interesting facts about it. Okay, so the idea of tattoos dates really far back. It is believed that the marks on the world's oldest mummy, called the Iceman, are tattoos. And his remains date to 3300 BCE and his body has 60 lines and crosses on it. Similarly, Egyptian and Nubian mummies from 2200 BCE have been found to have tattoos as well. Another interesting fact is that Gregory Paul McLaren, who goes by the name 
Lucky Diamond Rich holds the Guinness World Record as the world's most tattooed person. Rich has tattoos covering his entire body, including the insides of his eyelids, mouth, ears, and even foreskins. He has held the record since 2006, being 100% tattooed. And our last observance for today is National Peach Ice Cream Day. Well, it's a pretty simple observance to celebrate, so if you're able to eat ice cream today, try getting the peach flavored one for this observance. So for today in history, today in the year 1955, the famous theme park of Anaheim, California, Disneyland, started its operation. Well, the thing is, it really didn't go out that smooth during its first day. Um, the pass was counterfeited and thousands of uninvited people were admitted into Disneyland. The park was also not ready for the public. Food and drink ran out and a woman's high heel shoe got stuck in a wet asphalt and Mark Twain's steamboat nearly capsized for too many passengers. Of course, Disneyland soon recovered and started to gain momentum. And as the time went by, Disneyland had successfully drawn countless happy children and their parents, thus giving this wonderful theme park the title of the happiest place on earth. But as we all know, due to the global pandemic that occurred this year, Disneyland stopped operating until further notice. Well, don't worry you guys, we just have to stay positive and hopeful that everything will eventually get better and this event will open when that happens. Still on this day in 1941, New York Yankee center fielder Joe DiMaggio failed to get a hit against the Cleveland Indians, which brings his historic 56-game hitting streak to an end. In a night game in front of more than 67,000 fans, DiMaggio went hitless against Cleveland pitchers Al Smith and Jim Bagby Jr. In his first three at-bats, DiMaggio grounded out to third twice against Smith, both on hard-hit balls, and then walked. With Bagby um, pitching in the eighth inning, DiMaggio hit into a double play, ending a Yankee rally and the greatest hitting streak in the Major League history. For our notable figure for today, happy birthday to John Jacob Astor in 1763. John Jacob Astor is a German-American who is considered to be the first multimillionaire here in the U.S. Astor gained his fortune as a fur trade mogul who built an empire in Canada and the U.S. Later on, his family became well-known and achieved prominence in business, society, and politics in the U.S. and in the U.K. during the 19th and 20th century. For our animal of the day, let's talk about the green basilisk lizard. The green basilisk lizard has an amazing ability to run on water, thus giving the species its nickname, the Jesus Christ lizard. To accomplish this, they have long toes on their rear feet with fringes of skin that unfurl in the water, increasing surface area. As they rapidly churn their legs, they slap their feet hard against the water, creating a tiny air pocket that keeps them from sinking, provided they maintain their speed. They can also move along the surface like this for 15 feet or more, but when gravity eventually does take over, these lizards resort to its excellent swimming skills to continue its escape. Also, additional quick fact, in European myths and legends, a basilisk is a legendary reptile reputed to be a serpent king who can cause death with just a single glance. But of course, don't worry because our green basilisk blizzard doesn't do that. For our plant of the day, we'll talk about the Periopsis moonbeam. This plant has creamy lemon yellow flowers. Ooh, it's kind of like a tongue twister. Anyway, this plant has creamy lemon yellow flowers with lacy fine textured foliage. It can grow up to 2 feet tall and it's drought tolerant and low maintenance. While the Coryopsis moonbeam can be grown in moist, well-draining soil, it also does well in dry, rocky, and sandy soils. Lastly, this plant blooms from late spring to summer. Our place of the day is Bandung, Indonesia. Bandung is the third largest city in Indonesia and is nicknamed the Flower City because of its abundance of greenhouses, local floral, 
growing businesses and lush mountainous backdrop. The city has an active volcano named Tancuban Perapo. It's possible to take a tour to this volcano by hiring someone or rent a moped and visit it yourself. This is an active volcano that you can drive right up to the crater. If that sounds a little bit too much and if you're not comfortable getting close to the volcano, don't worry because they also have wonderful tea fields in the area and many relaxing hot springs. I was gonna say hot spots. And if you ever get hungry, feel free to visit Bandung's floating market in which people sell different types of food in boats. For our art of the day, we have Portia by John Everett Millay. Millay is best known as one of the artists who founded the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood in 1848. As a result of what have been called his concessions to the sweetness of Victorian taste, he was made an associate of the Royal Academy in 1853. Later on, he worked in an academic realist manner and concentrated on the kinds of saccharine subjects that are now synonymous with Victorian painting. For our profession of the day, we'll talk about gem cutters. A gem cutter is a person who cuts, shapes, and polishes natural and synthetic gemstones. In historical use, it usually refers to an artist who made hardstone carvings or engraved gems, a branch of miniature sculpture or ornament in gemstones. It only takes one mistake to ruin a beautifully crafted gemstone. That's why gem cutters need to have precision, patience, and concentration in order to create a well-polished gemstone. Our word of the day is recondite. It's an adjective meaning little known of a subject or knowledge. And for the fact of the day, did you know that a company in Taiwan makes dinnerware out of wheat? So you can eat your plate. Not only do they make plates out of wheat, but also spoons, bowls, um, forks, or even chopsticks. And the best part is that the dinnerware can be kept for months as long as they stay dry. Hey bro, what's for dinner? Well, you know, the usual. We have uh, steam plates, fried spoons and eggs, and my personal favorite, honey garlic pork chop. You know what time it is, our fun and games. And since today is World Emoji Day, we'll do a game about emojis. And we'll call it Wikimoji. The rule of this game is simple. In 20 seconds, try to solve all three puzzles based on their matching pairs of emojis. Okay, let's start. And today's puzzles are... Ta-da! Okay, you're gonna have 20 seconds to solve all three if you can and the timer starts now time's up time to reveal the answers and the answers to our puzzles are Solar Power, London Bridge, and Queen Bee. So, how many were you able to solve? And that is the end of our show today, guys. Uh, hope you like it. Hope you learned something new. Don't forget to share your thoughts about the topics we discussed today in the comment section below. Let's have another great weekend for all of us, okay? And I must have a haircut because oh man my hair is really grown long and it's kind of looking weird now anyways thank you and uh, we'll see you in the next one